think that was understating the case. The last three games, they've been awesome, scoring 70 points last week against Illinois. That was hard to believe because Illinois had them down 21-7, marching toward a fourth score. There was an interception, and then Michigan just turned it around. And, yeah, they have been playing excellent on offense. It's interesting, Sam. Bo Schembechler believes everything starts with defense, and the offense takes care of itself. And I would say that it is taking care of itself. Ali Haji Sheik will kick off for Michigan. Deep to receive for Purdue, number 21, Jimmy Smith. Number 20, Eric Jordan. Smith to the bottom of the screen. Jordan to the top. Haji Sheik with the kickoff. It's high. Coming down to the two-yard line. Taken by Jordan. And he is brought down immediately at the nine-yard line. Maybe the ten. Jeff Reeves makes the tackle. Purdue on offense. Scott Campbell, the quarterback. Wally Jones, Jimmy Smith in the backfield. Steve Bryan, Joe Linville, the wide receiver. Benson, Fritchie, Gunner, Royer, Fields, and Jaleski up front. Purdue, first and 10 from the 10-yard line. Michigan with excellent kickoff coverage. Wide to the right, Steve Bryant. Joe Lindell wide to the left. Look the backs in the backfield. Jeff Fulmer, number 41, is playing at fullback, and he carries on first down. Gets two on the play. Paul Gergash, number 50, in on the stop. The Michigan defense up front. Caraway back from an injury. Hammerstein and Osmond, the front three. Linebackers Thompson, Gergash, Warren, and Needham. And the deep backs Carpenter, Bostic, Jackson, and Burgai. Burgai with a big interception last week, helping turn the game around against Illinois. Second and eight. Handoff to Fulner, the fullback. Good hold on a good cutback. And he's down to the 23 yard line. First down, Purdue. Nice run by the fullback, Jeff Fulner. Good blocking from Jim Frisky and Ray Gunner is just a little cross action. Here's the trap. They cut inside. They're able to seal off the linebacker. Excellent blocking. And that's what Purdue has to do, establish something on the ground. Jeff Fulner, a sophomore, starting today. And in the backfield with him. Fulner takes the handoff. Another good hole up to the 29-yard line. Picks up six on the play. Before Ben Needham, the outside linebacker, makes the stop. Purdue with a surprise starting backfield of Fulner, number 41, at tailback, and number 37, Bruce King, at fullback. Well, it is a surprise because we expected to see a lot of Jimmy Smith. They are running behind Gunnar and Fritschke, the quick guard and tackle. Ball spotted at the 28-yard line, second and five, Purdue, and they've yet to throw the ball. This is King, and another big hole across the 45 up to the 46. 18-yard pickup, Tony Jackson, the safety, stopping Bruce King. From ground level, Bruce King on a little trap. He just uh, seal the guard, trapped the, uh, on the left side, and King runs hard. That's a good-looking back. Once again, they do not go with Smith. It is King, and he's getting the chores done in the early going. Ball at the 46-yard line, first and 10 for Purdue. And we thought they'd come out throwing. They've run the ball from their own 10. This is Fulner, the fullback, up to the 49-yard line. Gergash and Boren in on the tackle. Boren, number 40, a sophomore from Columbus, Ohio. Gergash, a junior out of Lakewood, Ohio. Fulner's got decent size. He's 6 foot 196, and they are just blowing him off the line of scrimmage right now. That usually doesn't happen to the Wolverines. Second and seven, ball just short of the 49-yard line. Campbell, first pass of the game. Out to the right side, it's complete to the tight end, Cliff Benson, down to the Michigan 45-yard line. Ben Needham, number 97, the outside linebacker, made the stop. Pickup of seven on the play. It's going to be very close to a first down. Looks like they'll have to bring out the chains on this one for the measurement. Benson is a natural athlete. He uh, uh, has had 25 receptions thus far this year and they ran just a little crossing pattern after play action held up to the backers and they found the, uh, the right area in between the linebackers and the DBs. So we'll measure for this first down and see uh, just how Purdue is doing. Bruce King, number 37, starting at fullback for Purdue today is a freshman, 6'3", 214, out of Dale, Indiana. They have him listed as a linebacker and he is starting at fullback. So uh, Jim Young obviously looking for a better running game than he's had in recent games. 
has gone to a couple of different banks. Well, I know it's a surprise to Michigan because they did expect to see Smith and Jones. Jones has had some knee problems. Smith was the comeback player a year ago after he left the squad in 79. But uh, we're getting a look at a couple of running backs that thus far getting the job done. Third down and less than a yard for Purdue at inside the Michigan 45 yard line. This drive started at the Purdue 10. Only one pass thrown by Scott Campbell. And that was complete to his tight end. Campbell is fifth in the nation in passing efficiency. Now they're marking the chains on the far side. Now we're all set. On third and one, Fulner carries. Big ball. Down to the 37 yard line. First down, Purdue. Mike Warren, the inside linebacker, number 40, made the stop. But there's that man again, the sophomore, Jeff Fulner. Talk about Fuller. He got a good block from King, who not only has run the ball well, shows that he can block. They double down with Fritzky and Gunner on the left side, and King, uh, just on a wham block, got it done. Linville wide to the right, Bryant wide left. I formation. Now they shift out of it. Fuller 41, King 37 in the backfield. King carries, pulls his way inside the 35, falls forward to about the 33. Nice pick up there. And Purdue continues to run the ball well, Irv. Tackle to tackle. They haven't tried to go outside. We haven't seen Campbell run the option the last two weeks, but he is capable. He's got decent speed, but boy, you talk about impressive. Let's talk about him up front. Fritschke, Gunner, Royer, Fields, and uh, Jaleski, and they are doing the job. They've got some good size at the tackles. Jaleski is 6'6", 273. Fritschke is 6'8", 268. It's second and six. Purdue on the 33. Campbell, quick pitch, knockdown. Good play by Ben Needham, number 97, the outside linebacker. Got the big left arm up there and knocked that pass down, intended for Joe Lenville. It's a good football player. He can run the 40 and 4-7. Has had some knee problems. Sat out a couple of ball games with that bad knee. But uh, he's had 44 tackles this year, and he does have excellent agility. That slows the attack down. Third and uh, very crucial uh, yardage here for the Boilermakers. Long situation, third and six for 33. Campbell goes to the run. Nice run by Fulner. Down to the 23 yard line. It's a first down for Purdue. They went to the ground on third and six. Well, can you believe it? Here they go. A little cross buck action. They pull a guard and trap right here. Seal it off well to line of scrimmage. And Purdue, in a passing situation, Jimmy Young throws the ball here in this situation. Not today. They are coming out and they're stuffing it on the ground. Keith Bostick, the strong safety number 13, made the tackle. First and 10, Purdue at the Michigan 23. Campbell shifts his backs. Fakes the handoff, running the option. Fakes the pitch, keeps it, and fights his way inside the 20 to the 19. Tony Jackson. And there was a fumble on the play. Let's see. Michigan. Michigan's offense is coming on the field. Well, fumble see. and Michigan has the recovery. Let's see if we can get another look. On the uh, reverse option down the line, a good fake by Campbell. Has the ball in his left arm. Gets hit right there. And number 15 just strips the ball for Michigan. That's Jerry Burgai, the guy who uh, had such a key play against Illinois a week ago. So Michigan stops a drive where Purdue was really impressive. So oh, big break as Burgai strips the football from Campbell as Purdue had marched down the field from their own 10. Smith on first down to throw. And it's intercepted by Mark Brown, number 59, the linebacker. So how about that for turnaround? Well, they wanted to go deep to Carter, but Mark Brown had things uh, squared away pretty good up front. And uh, Smith went to his secondary receiver. Here it is again. Play action right here, Sam. They do want to go deep. Nothing doing. Underneath, Mike Brown, the uh, Mark Brown, that is, the second leading tackler on this ball club, really read the pass. So Purdue has got something cooking at the 30-yard line. Well, Purdue gets it right back. Michigan gets one play on offense. Boilermakers have it. At the Michigan 30, no score in the game, 10.51 to go, first quarter. Sam Rosen with Irv Brown at Ross Age Stadium in West Lafayette. Bryant in motion, Campbell to throw on first down. Big hit! Is it a fumble? No, they rule incomplete. The referee says his arm came forward in the passing motion, so it's an incomplete pass. Well, a hard rush by, uh, <laughs> by Michigan, and they really got the chores done that time. Campbell tried to uh, catch him as Michigan was a little confused in their initial setup. But uh, once again, that good rush on the outside. And 
And I, I believe that it was a big need of it, possibly Bostic uh, involved in that play. It's second and 10 for Purdue at the Michigan 30. They took the opening kickoff from their own 10, marched down to the Michigan 20 yard line, 70 yards, mostly on the ground. And then Campbell was stripped of the football by Burgey. Michigan's class from Smith was intercepted on first down. Purdue has the ball back. Second down, 10. Campbell, draw play. Fulner carrying, goes outside, spins. Just a few yards, hard earned, down to the 27. Burgey, the cornerback, number 15, made the tackle. Purdue is really splitting uh, on offense, Sam, and it's really making a difference. It's creating some natural holes. Michigan likes to play that 5-2. We're going to take a look at those splits. Look at the wide splits. It looks like a Bud Wilkinson split T team, <laughs> and they really are creating some natural gaps. Fulner, seven carries, 43 yards. Third and seven, Campbell to throw. Looking left, being rushed, down he goes. He had precious few seconds, could not find a receiver down the left side, was looking for Linville, and then Tony Osmond threw him down, number 79. The right end made the stop, making number 78, Tony Osmond. And in the punt is Matt Kinzer, number 28. Standing at midfield, 9.44 to go in this first quarter. No score in the game. Kick is away. And fair catch called for at the seven-yard line. We'll be back with more college football. You're watching it from Ross A Stadium. No score. We'll be back in just a moment. Hellback has the handoff, has a couple of yards before he's brought down. By Brock Speck and Mark Brown, the inside linebackers, number 58, number 59. Michigan on offense, Steve Smith, the quarterback. Edwards and Wolfolk, the running backs. Carter and Bean, the wide receivers. Betts, Moransky, Becker, Dixon, and Humphreys, and Paris up front. And that's an awesome offensive line for Michigan. Pickup of two on the play. Make it second down eight for Michigan on the nine-yard line. Carter wide to the left side. Rest of the team is tight. Wolfolk at the top of the eye. Smith baking, looking left for Carter. He's got him wide open. And he's out of bounds at the 26-yard line. Well, Anthony Carter, who's been playing very well last couple of weeks. Steve Smith hooking up with him. Well, Carter is an excellent athlete. Many people consider him to be the best in America as far as getting open. And that time, a little uh, play action. They got it done. Purdue, front three. Matt Hernandez, Moore, Moreland. The linebackers, Gladstone, Brown, Spack, and David Fry. And the deep backs, Derek Taylor, Tim Sennett, McKinney, and Williams. First and 10 for Michigan. They're on 26-yard line. Steve Smith, who's really come on the last three games. Hit 58% of his passes last three games. Wolfolk doesn't get much. About two yards on the play. Before Purdue's Casey Moore, the nose guard, number 98, made the stop. On uh, number 24, Butch Wolfolk, the only running back with over 1,000 yards in the Big Ten this season. He's the all-time leading rusher at Michigan. Over 3,000 yards, 3,500 to be exact, and he is a slashing type of runner. They are using the flex a little bit on Purdue's side of the field to try and cut down the angles so the tackles don't get cut off. Two tight ends in there now for Michigan. Betts and Dunaway. Carter is wide right. It's second and eight. Smith still has it on the option. Gets away. He's a good runner. Lost the ball. And Purdue has it. Well, another big break for the Boilermakers. Well, Bo Schembecker isn't going to be very happy with this. Two turnovers early. Here it is down the line option. And uh, somebody gets a hand on Smith. He breaks a tackle, but he's got the ball in the left hand instead of the right hand and uh, gets hit on that side. And Purdue comes up with a fumble, and they have uh, got their uh, second big break. Tim Seneff, number 43, the guy who jumps on the ball. He's big and strong, an academic All-American. Well, Purdue now in Michigan territory for the third time in the game. No score, 7.58 to go in the first quarter. And off to Fulner, down to the 30-yard line. He picked up 12 on the play. Boy, is he running. 
tell you what they're doing, Sam. They are running that crossbuck action to get Mark Brown and Brad Spack out of there, and it is working. That crossbuck is doing the chores for Purdue, and they're very effective with it. Bostick and Cooper made the stop for Michigan, but it's a first down for Purdue at the Michigan 30-yard line. Steve Bryant wide right. Everett Pickens wide left. Campbell handing off inside, gets a couple of yards down to the 28-yard line. Sinsich and Boren in on the stop. Take a look. Once again, Michigan in that uh, traditional odd set. Number 50 is Paul Royer, a very steady blocker, and he's taking on uh, the middle guard in this situation, Hammerstein, and just doing the job. On second down, the handoff is to Fulmer. He's got a big hole. Breaks it outside and down the 15-yard line. Tony Jackson, number 37, made the stop for Michigan. But once again, Jeff Fulner, the sophomore, getting the start today. He's earning himself a position on this team. Kid King has really been superb. Jaleski, the big tackle, is 6'6", 273, and he's got something to prove today because all year long it's been Moransky and Bubba Paris from Michigan getting the ink. And thus far, Jaleski is just doing a tremendous job. Jeff Fulner came into this game with 13 carries for 73 yards. He's carried nine times for 66 already here in the first quarter. First down, Purdue. Bryant in motion. Fulner carries, dives across the 15, down to the 14-yard line. Picked up two. Winfred Carraway, the junior defensive end, number 63, made the stop for Michigan. Once again, the ground game working well for Purdue. Got the lead block from King, and then Carraway did close down. He's missed some time because of a bad ankle. Has played a nose guard, was a linebacker. Pretty versatile. He's 6'3", 230. Campbell, the fine quarterback. Fifth in the nation in passing efficiency. And Stapuller has got another good hole down to the 10-yard line. It'll be third and four. Gergash and Boren, the two inside linebackers. Gergash number 50, Boren number 40, making the stop on Jeff Fulner. Gergash is the strongest member of the team, an excellent weightlifter. Boren. Uh, November 22nd, 1.30 a.m. Sunday morning in the east, 11.30. Make that 10.30 uh, on, the Pacific, on the Pacific coast. That's the west coast, isn't yes, it, Art? that is. Uh, I got it out. <laughs> okay, that's Notre Dame and Penn State, followed by Nebraska at Oklahoma, Monday midnight. November 23rd, Nebraska at Oklahoma, Purdue at Indiana, and Baylor at Texas. Great lineup of college football for you. That Purdue-Indiana game, of course, a great rivalry here in the state of Indiana. The Boilermakers with a big third and four play upcoming. No score, first quarter, 5.49 to go. Purdue has had 19 offensive plays thus far in the first quarter. 16 rushing. They've moved the ball well. They've been in Michigan territory, but they've been unable to score as yet. Third and four from the Michigan 10. Campbell. Hands to Fulner. Not there. Got about a yard. That's all. Caraway and Gergash making the stop. Caraway 63. Gergash number 50. And. It's a field goal attempt coming up for Purdue. This will be about a 26 yarder. Let's see. Now the. All right. It is a field goal try. Tim Clark, the sophomore. Why field goal? Really knew very little about Bruce King and Jeff Fulner are getting the job done, but what's so impressive is the way that Purdue has taken over the line of scrimmage. They have just gone out and they got the chores done. Look at the scoring drive. Six plays, 31 yards, and they did it on the ground. The Harold and Campbell to Bryant combination really hasn't surfaced thus far. It's been on the ground. A great effort thus far. They have surprised Michigan at this point. Here's the kickoff. Bryant watching it go out of bounds. Terrible kick that went into the stands. I don't believe that kick. <laughs> Walt Trapeza kicking off. He kicked it into the stands and around the 30-yard line. He's hollering over to the equipment manager. He wants some chalk. <laughs> How about a new boot? Well, he'll catch a little heat at the fraternity house tonight. Drapeza just, <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> He's checking it out. Let's see, what did I do? <laughs> <laughs> Free seats, there you go. Good way to watch the game. Oh, yeah, cheaper too. <laughs> I tell you, I flew over the stadium this morning, and it's a beautiful sight. And it's got to be a great sight with the stadium packed. Here at Purdue. 
And Walt Trapeza, number six, checking things out. He's moved the tee back to the 35-yard line. See, and now, they, now Michigan has declined, and they'll take the ball on the 34. That's where the ball went off the field. I don't know how the officials figured that one out. You look at Jim Young, head coach of Purdue. I don't know how the, the official could spot it at the 34. That ball went right into the stands. No way he'd get an angle on it, but Michigan declines and figures they've got good field position, takes the ball on the 34. Well, Michigan has really been ineffective thus far because of the interception and the fumble, but I gotta believe the Bo Schembechler team will come out and start doing things right. We'll watch Smith here. First and 10, Michigan trailing 3-0. Five minutes, three seconds to go in the first quarter. Long count by Smith. And the Wolfolk, look at him get hit right away. Good hit. By number 49, Bob Nomanson, the inside linebacker. Well, this is an audible, and boy, Nomanson just whips the offensive guard here and just comes in and gets a chores. And look at this play by Nomanson. Butch Wolfolk is a very strong runner. He's got good legs. Chris Scott, boy, they just get it done. I want to correct myself, that was Chris Scott, number 99. The sophomore lineman with a good tackle throwing Butch Wolfolk for a four yard loss. Second and 14 for Michigan. They're really aroused there. Yeah, they really are. Playing at home. Just keeping. He's a good runner. He fumbled last time, though. He's tripped up here at the 37 yard line by number 58, Brock Spack. Good tackle by Spack up at the 37 yard line. Bo Schembechler. Well, he's a good man. A lot of people don't understand him because uh, he is such a strong-willed person. But you talk to his coaches, he's good to them, he's good to the kids, and he's a brilliant man. That's A lot of people just think he's a hard worker and a plugger. The guy has got a great mind, understands the X and O's as well as anybody in the country. 13-year head coach at Michigan. Third and seven for the Wolverines. They're on 37. They trail three to nothing late in the first quarter. Smith, another long count, wants to throw. Quarterback draw. And a good run by Smith up to the 45-yard line. He's got the first down. Rock Spack, number 58, the linebacker, brings him down. Smith very tough on this quarterback draw. Well, they come out with a single back setup, and they handle it well. They spread Purdue out a little bit, and they block it and wall it off very well. Turn a man inside, a good block by number 65 for Michigan, Kurt Vector, and he pulls and traps about as well as anybody in the country. A fine play, and uh, once again, the set really paid off. It spread the Boilermakers out. We'll measure. They're going to measure on this, but it looks from here that he made the first down. He used that same play against Illinois late in the first half last week, ran 42 yards for a touchdown. Michigan was in the lead, and that was it from there. Well, he really gives them another dimension. I've always liked uh, the way Wolfolk gets after it. And their fullback, Edwards, is a very underrated ball player. He can play. There's a look, 3-0. Uh, look at the crowd here in the first period. Three minutes, 27 seconds to go and counting in this first quarter. And Michigan trailing Purdue. Three nothing, first and 10 Michigan, their own 45 yard line. Sophomore Steve Smith, handoff to the fullback Dan Edwards. And Edwards across midfield for the Purdue 48. You know, you talked about Edwards being underrated. Last year, he ran for over 900 yards. He's a great runner. But this year, he's doing the yeoman's work blocking for Wolfo. Well, you know, that's true, Sam. He's very solid and dependable. He's a team man. And that's the kind of a guy that uh, you love to have on your ball club. Because Wolfo is getting the ink this year. Edwards is very, very dependable. And uh, last year, a tailback doing the job. This year, a fullback, and he's blocking more. Somebody will draft him. Maybe not, not up in the high rounds, but somewhere along the line, I think the pro team will pick him up. Second and three, Michigan. Wolfolk trying to break it outside. And he gets away from a couple of tackles and picks up a nice 10-yard gain to the 38 of Purdue. Nice run by Butch Wolfolk. Chris Scott, number 99, finally ran him down. That well, was a tackle trap. Wolfolk showed you why he's so highly thought of. Because there wasn't a lot doing. He just put his head down and took on the DB. That's a good back. We saw him earlier in the year in the game against Michigan State when he carried the ball 39 times for 253 yards. So he can be the durable, hard-working back if you need him. And he isn't too shabby on that track team. He can fly. First and 10 for Michigan as they drive to the Purdue 38-yard line. Smith still has it. Picks the wolf ball. Leap blocks one man, gets about a yard before he is buried. Brock Spack, number 58, did it again. Tim Seneff, number 43, also 
in on the stop for Purdue. What a job that time by Senef as he took on the lead blocker Stan Edwards on the option held his ground and got involved with the tackle or else there was something going for uh, Michigan outside. I'm going to call it no gain on the play as they spot the ball at the 38 once again. Second down and 10 for Michigan. This drive started their own 34 yard line. We are late in the first quarter. A minute and a half to go. Purdue leading three to nothing. Smith looks to throw. Quick to the left side. Anthony Carter. Two men on him. Breaks it wide. And it pulled out of bounds at the Purdue 27. But that's good for a first down. Derek Taylor, number three, the cornerback. Tim Sennett, number 43, pulled Anthony Carter out of bounds. Even though it was just a little short gain, there's a message there. It's an advertisement for what's coming late. Smith just rears up and throws the ball out here. They're going to pick on Taylor a little bit. Anthony Carter, who's very, very quick, 5'11", 161. He'll draw double coverage all year long. He's the first sophomore ever elected the MVP at the University of Michigan. That's really something, Sam, because they turn out some great seniors every year. Look at the numbers on him. 33 receptions coming out of this game. He's caught two in this game for 28 yards. Smith. Long count on first and 10 at the 27. Still has it. Throwing to the right side for Carter. And he dropped it. May have turned his head a little bit. Had it and dropped it at the 17. Derek Taylor, number three, was covering on Anthony Carter. It was an out cut. And you want the ball over the left shoulder. This time Smith hit him on the right side. And Carter, who's an excellent receiver, did lose concentration for just a minute. This guy is really something. It's interesting, the duel that we had hoped for today between Brian and Carter. It hasn't developed so far because Purdue has been running the ball. And uh, I'll tell you what, the fans were a little shocked, as we were, because it's got a passing ball for Absolutely. Michigan, second and 10 at the Purdue 27. Steve Smith. Wolfolk and Edwards in the backfield. Long count as the audibles at the line. Still has it. Looking over the middle deep. He's got the tight end. Dunaway touchdown. Craig Dunaway, the tight end, with his ninth reception of the year, his third touchdown, and Michigan has taken the lead. Well, that's what happens when you play the Wolverines and Carter. There was double coverage on Carter, and the tight end could have caught a cold. He was so open. A little play action. Bo Schembechler is funny. He says, you guys have uh, turned us into sissies because you've made me pass, talking about his assistance, but they throw very well right here. Look at this, wide open, oh. fine catch, and Michigan has taken the lead with 112 left. Smith caps it off with his 14th touchdown pass of the season. The sophomore is really doing it. He's run for 10 touchdowns and thrown for 14. Well, and there's our time, 112 left uh, in the quarter. Sam, what's interesting, you know, Rick Leach holds the all-time record uh, of course, Leach is now playing baseball for the Tigers at 29. And now uh, here's Smith at 24 touchdowns. Here's a guy who they felt was hurting him early in the year. Boy, he hadn't hurt him now as Michigan trying to march to the Rose Bowl. He's got the lead. Haji Sheik kicks off to Smith and Jordan. Jimmy Smith, seven yards deep, won't run it out. And Purdue will go on offense from their own 20-yard line. They have been deep in Michigan territory three times in the first quarter once a fumble by quarterback Scott Campbell he was stripped of the ball by Jerry Burgey at the Michigan 20 next time Michigan stood up well defensively and forced Purdue to punt the third time Purdue marched down to the 10 yard line and wound up having to kick a field goal 26 yarder by Tim Clark first and 10 Purdue handoff is to King and the freshman fullback gets up to about the 23 yard line. Mike Boren, the inside linebacker, making the stop for Michigan. Three yard gain by Bruce King, a freshman who goes 6 3, 2 14. Basically, the Big Ten is a 5 2 defense. They'll offset a little bit, they'll uh, flex their tackles so they don't get cut off. There's a number of plays on the last drive by Michigan as they really came back to get it done on that play action. 27 yard touchdown pass. Smith to Dunaway. Second and seven. This is Fulner carrying for about two yards. As Michigan's defense getting a little tougher now. Al Sensich, freshman nose guard, number 53, made the stop. Brings up third and we'll call it a short five, maybe four as they get close to the 26-yard line. I like this Sensich. He's just a freshman out of Cleveland. Has started occasionally this year. Shares a little time, but I like the way he hits and reads for a young kid. He's going to be a dandy. Third and four for Purdue. Fulner has carried 13 times for 75 yards. Campbell, draw play to Fulner. 
He gets the first down, got to the 30-yard line. Strong run by the sophomore tailback, Mike Warren, number 40, Ben Needham, number 97, making the tackle on Jeff Fulmer. Look at Scott Campbell, the sophomore quarterback. How about the shoes he's had to fill, Irv, with uh, Mark Herman? Mark Herman, of course, is with the Denver Broncos, and uh, people just didn't think Campbell could come around this quickly. He's been tremendous. First and ten for Purdue at the 30. Campbell the throw over the middle deep for the tight end Benson. He's got it. Bostic rides him down across midfield. But Cliff Benson going deep over the middle was wide open. Well, he found the soft spot of the zone. Campbell comes back a little bit of a fake. This is a good athlete, Benson. He's had 27 receptions this year. They call him Yoda. He's a basketballer and a track man. And, boy, he makes a fine catch. He's able to hold on. First and ten for Purdue at the Michigan 47-yard line. As Campbell went to the air this time, he oh, puts it back on the ground. And King, the fullback, carries to the 40-yard line. Picks up seven on the play. Ben Needham, number 97, the senior outside linebacker, made the stop. This guy's impressive, too. We've been talking about Fulner. This freshman uh, fullback is doing it well, too, Bruce King. Well, that's for sure. You know, Michigan has guessed wrong four times when they have slanted. They've slanted to the wrong side of the field. And that time, Fritschke just buried Osborne and got the job done. It's second and three. The handoff to King, and he's hit hard right away. Looked like Sinsich, number 53, the nose guard, getting in there. Also, Paul Gergash, number 50. There's Al Sinsich, the freshman nose guard from Cleveland, Ohio. Well, we got to look from ground level at the splits, and you can see Purdue's strategy, and it's very good. They just spread you out as much as they can. And where they've been very effective is running off tackle with the cross buck and the lead block, the lamb type of action. Let's see if they come back with it or throw this guy. Ball back at the 40-yard line. It's third and three. Campbell to throw. Has time. It's deflected incomplete. Good play. Looked like Needham once again got his arm up to deflect it. Second deflection by Ben Needham. Here you look at Jeff Fulner. I really like this guy. Needham plays for a guy I coached with, Mylon Bulatich. And I was with Mylon last night. He just feels that this guy's one of the best. He's had a lot of injury problems, but he can run 4-7. When you've got that kind of speed playing the linebacker, you're effective. Jim Boche is in punt formation at his own 45. Anthony Carter is the deep man. And Boche trying to kick away from it. It's high. They let it go. It bounces on the one and in the end zone. Touchback. They were trying to down it before it got in. But it will be a touchback and Purdue will go on offense. 40-yard punt for Boche. 13-22 to go in the second quarter. And Michigan is leading Purdue 7 to 3. Always great football for you. We've got the Canadian Football League grand finale, the Great Cup Championship from Olympic Stadium in Montreal, Sunday, November 22nd, live 1:30 Eastern, 10:30 Pacific. Should be a great game. It really is. It's such a spread out type of situation. I really enjoy Canadian football. Edmonton Oil for the Edmonton Eskimos trying to defend their championship. This is Wolfolk. What a hole he's got. And he's up to the 29-yard line. Picked up nine on the play. Well, I'll tell you, you talk about a hole that you could drive a truck through. Bubba Parks, and you've got a couple of bookends. Parks on one side, Moransky on the other. Look at this hole. When Wolfolk square, uh, squares those shoulders up to the line of scrimmage, you can see why he's such a great athlete. Those bow-legged guys never get hurt. Just square those shoulders up and just run over you. He's averaging six yards a carry. Picked up nine at second and one, Michigan. On the 29, it's Edwards, the fullback, and he gets about two on the play, and up for a first down, David Fry, the junior outside linebacker, number 60, in on the tackle. Hey, look at David Fry. Fry is very quick. He's six foot, uh, actually six one, closer, closer to six one than six foot. 205, just very quick. Yeah, but can he do impersonations? <laughs> that I don't know. We'll have to ask him. First and 10 for Michigan at the 32. Steve Smith, the sophomore quarterback. Edwards and Wolfolk in the backfield. It's Wolfolk carrying. Good hole. 40. Up to the 45. Good power and good speed by Butch Wolfolk as he picked up 13 on the play. Marcus McKinney, the safety number 34, made the stop. We're talking about Fry. He gets buried by a pretty good right side. That's Kurt Becker, the All-American candidate, and Ed Moransky, 
Moransky, a guy, he walked out on the field and a guy said, you have a building permit. He is that big. He's 6'7", 275. Becker, 6'6", 260. Might be the best right side in collegiate football. Wolfolk, seven carries, 32 yards. Michigan, a first down, their own 45. They lead 7-3. to three. Wolfolk once more. Gets about two on the play. Brought down by number 99, Chris Scott and Tim Seneff. The senior safety, number 43, also in on the stop of Butch Wolfolk. It'll be second and eight for Michigan. Butch Wolfolk, you see the season he's having. He had, uh, at one point this season, he had a streak of seven consecutive 100-yard games. And we had saw him have a game of 253 yards against Michigan State. Smith really improving as a quarterback. Holds the ball on the option, tries to make the turn, gets up to midfield, and that's all. Before he's brought down by Brock Spack, number 58. Robert Williams, number 36, also in on the tackle. And it'll be third and five for Michigan. Spack is the leading tackler, has 73 solos, uh, had that good freshman year. He's just a good football player. They tried to go to the short side that time. Third down play, and the crowd's getting involved now. They'd like uh, Purdue to hang in here and stop this first down attempt. Okay, it is being wide to the left. Carter wide right. Edwards is the wing back to the left side. Long setback is Wolfo. Smith. An audible at the line. Straight back. Deep down the right side for Carter. Overthrown and almost intercepted. Incomplete. Bob Lashley, number 39, diving for it. Just missed the interception. Came out with that pro slot that time, and they tried to uh, go into the double coverage, and boy, Lashley did an excellent job. Almost had the interception. It'll bring up the uh, punting situation. Don Brackett, number 28, one of the leading punters in the nation, is back at his own 36-yard line, averaging 44.7, 43.5 for his career. Helmets go on offense from their own 21. Campbell still has it in the round to Steve Bryant. Gets away from one man, didn't get away. Great tackle by Ben Needham, who threw him for a 10-yard loss. He one-handed that tackle. Well, I tell you, every time uh, you're making a call, it is Ben Needham because the play was well-designed. They did have a wall set up, and Needham refused to be fooled. Your uh, assignment as a defensive end is to trail. Here's Needham, is able to get a hold of uh, the very elusive Bryant. Number 79 coming back <laughs> actually helps out a little bit. So uh, Purdue got a little um, aid that time they didn't want from Jim Fritzke. Second down, about 19 for Purdue. Around 11-yard line, maybe the 12th. Campbell drops the ball and falls on it at the 9-yard line. So Purdue having some problems in this offensive series. First the big loss on the end around. Now Campbell has trouble with the ball. Spot the ball back on the 9-yard line. Make it third and about 22. Put in a little skill. Joe Linville is into the lineup. Uh, he's a former quarterback that's a uh, wide receiver. Tim Alsbaugh is in the fullback to block, apparently. And they'll go to the shotgun. Campbell, number 10, the quarterback, the man in the middle. In motion to Steve Bryant, number one, leading receiver. Campbell at the goal line, steps up out to the right side. Two men there, and it's complete. Up at the 20-yard line, way short of a first down. Brian Carpenter. Making the stop, but it's way short. A good look at zone coverage for Cross as they send uh, Brian in motion. The zone just shifts. There they go, covering their uh, third or their quarter, depending on the assignment. There's the catch and the hit. It'll bring up the punting situation. Completion to David Rutherford, the wide receiver. Jim Boucher is back in punt formation, standing at his own seven. Plenty of time. Line drive kick. Anthony Carter is on 38. Find some room. And down he goes up to 47. Tough return, hard hit, but Anthony Carter brought back about nine yards. And Michigan will go on offense. Purdue is fortunate. Anytime you punt the ball flat to Anthony Carter, you're just asking for trouble. And he was uh, one step away from breaking a good crowd here. They really like their football in the Big Ten. And West Lafayette is just a nice place to be for college on a Saturday afternoon. It is just a perfect day. Temperature in the mid-60s. Just gorgeous. They're lucky here because they can get cold. <laughs> right now, Michigan on offense trying to get hot. Wolfolk is trapped, slips away, and gets up to the 49-yard line. Picked up two. Looks like he might be thrown for a loss. Casey Moore made the stop, number 98. 
As Butch Wolfolk gets up slowly. Well, it was a toss sweep to Butch that time. Big Scott missed the tackle, but he has played very well. And, of course, that's a, an area where Purdue's been hurting this year. They lost Tom Monroe and Paul Hanna very early, and it's been a real problem. I like this Scott. He'll be a good football player. Second and eight for Michigan. Ball at the 49-yard line. Edwards, a wing back to the left. Lone setback is Wolfolk. Smith right back to throw. Looks for Carter. Now goes the other side. It's complete to Bean at the 35-yard line. Vince Bean, the sophomore from Southfield, Michigan. Well, when you double cover Anthony Carter, somebody's got to be open. And Bean loves it because he was the caddy a year ago for Carter, the backup. Here it is, another look. And, boy, this guy puts this thing in there. It looks a little wobbly, but I tell you, here in person, it wasn't wobbly at all. The ball was thrown hard. First down effort for Michigan. Marcus McKinney made the tackle. Ball spotted at the 34. Michigan leading 7-3. Seven, seven and a half minutes to go. Second quarter. And Michigan on the move. Smith to Wolfo. Cuts back to the inside, now goes outside, fights his way to the 30-yard line, flag goes down. Marcus McKinney, number 34, made the tackle, and a little upset as he's looking at the official who threw the flag. Personal foul against Purdue. It's a late hit, and I believe we have it. We'll take another look. It is a toss sweep to Big Wolf Hook. Here he goes, goes down right here, and he gets speared in the back, and a good call. That's how people get hurt. They will tack on big yardage on this one. 15 yards. First penalty of the game. Moves the ball down to the Purdue 15-yard line. Otho Courts is the referee. Guy in the white hand. Let's uh, give credit to the crew. I'm by Dan Davey. Headlines on Ed Sheck. The rest of the crew is L.T. Bonner. Tom Szymanski. wonder if that's anything to the old center dick. <laughs> and the back judge is Chet DiStefano. Michigan. First and 10 at the Purdue 15-yard line. Carter wide right. Michigan touchdown was scored on a pass from Smith to Dunaway, the tight end. This is Lawrence Ricks carrying, and he's inside the 10. Lawrence Ricks, the junior tailback who backs up Butch Wolfolk and has scored eight touchdowns this season, carries nicely inside the 10. Not a bad backup. He's out of Barberton, Ohio. He's uh, 5'10", 195, just a junior. He's got 4'9 speed, but it's deceptive speed, Sam. He gives you a lot of leg. Once again, like most of the Michigan backs through the year, they, the year they, they really square those shoulders up to the line of scrimmage, and then good things happen. Second and four for Michigan on the Purdue nine-yard line. Michigan looking to open up the lead. Smith, an audible, and they moved on the left side. Looked like Jerry DiOrio, number 64, jumped. There's Jerry out of Youngstown, Ohio. A lot of people from Youngstown up to see uh, this ball game today. In fact, they're telling us they watch ESPN. So uh, there's Bodie's not very happy. <laughs> I'll tell you what. A picture's worth a million words when you talk to Bo. There he is on the headsets. Balls. He was talking to the people in the band before the game, Sam. And, you know, everybody says that football coaches get very uptight. And he took the time to talk to the band. <laughs> ball spotted back at the 14-yard line. Second and nine for Michigan. Good balance in the Michigan offense thus far in the game. 86 yards rushing, 73 passing. Smith, pitch back to Ricks, takes it around the right side. 10, 5, and down to the one yard line. Lawrence Ricks, boy, can he run? Can he run? And can Carter block? Carter, 161 pounds, makes the block. I think it's going to be uh, called back. There's a penalty. But here we go again. Option handled extremely well to get the lead, but here number one will come into your picture and just kill somebody. That's Carter. Got the big block. It is all for naught as there's a penalty against the Wolverines. Holding is the call against Michigan. And that brings the ball back to the 21-yard line. They've got to go to the five for a first down. So it'll be second and 16 for Michigan. Vince Bean comes back into the game. Wide receiver replaces Norm Betts, the tight end. Bean, number 27. Anthony Carter, number one. Craig Dunaway, who caught the touchdown pass, number 88, is the tight end. Number 16, the sophomore from Grand Blanc, Michigan, Steve Smith, the quarterback. Edwards and Ricks in the backfield with him. Dropped the ball. And looks like Smith fell on top of it. So it'll be third and long. For Michigan, third and about 18 now. 
will spot the ball at the 23 yard line. Smitty has gone over the sideline. We'll take another look. He just flat drops it. You've got to put great pressure on the center's uh, backside. Tom Dixon, in this case, just didn't happen. The ball is floating around, and Purdue almost comes up with it. So, third down coming up now. Got to believe that Michigan will try and go to Carter or possibly Bean. They are in a uh, double wideout situation. Michigan has had two turnovers in this game. It's third and long, third and 18 at the 23. Smith looking, looking deep, looks to the left, runs, still looking, still scrambling, down he goes, crush. Chris Scott, number 99, finally got him. Smith had plenty of time, but couldn't find anybody. This has been their big problem all year long, no pass rush, the Boilermakers just haven't put the heat on. Look at the time Smith has, they lose their passing lanes here, and Smith scrambles around, I thought he had great room on the other side. He comes back and almost turns the corner and gets hit right there by Scott, or he had some things going. Bring up Game for Purdue on offense, their own 31. Jeff Fellner carries, gets about two. And Fulner is stopped at the 33-yard line. Out of the pile comes Ben Needham. Who else? Number 97. Mike Lemoran, number 93, also went on the stop. Linebackers from Michigan starting to stay at home now, looking for that cross buck. And i got to believe that Jimmy Young has got a cross buck pass in his playbook because there's a lot of room between the backers and the uh, DBs right now. It is second down, eight for Purdue. Campbell hands off. And Bruce King, the fullback, it's nothing. Winfred Carraway, number 63. Ben Needham, number 97, in on the stop. Carraway missed five games with an injury. He's out of Detroit, just to Jim Young. Who He's learned his lessons success. under both. Yeah, and he... Uh, had good ball clubs down at Arizona. I was talking to him before the ball game. He says now he's, there's a little controversy in Arizona over him. But the guy did a great job. He's done a fantastic job here, taking him to three straight bowl games. Third down and eight for Purdue on their own 33. Bryant in motion, shotgun formation. Campbell throwing left side, complete to Bryant up at the 41 yard line. Flag is down on the play. Looks like it's short of a first down. There is a flag down. Bryant gets up limping. That's something Purdue does not want to see. Backfield in motion. Illegal motion. Bryant may have moved toward the line of scrimmage too soon uh, on that play. Could have been. Bostic uh, really had excellent coverage that time, and the ball was grilled. It uh, will come back. We've got 3-10 left. 7-3 is our score. Let's see if we can take another look at the coverage. Campbell out of the shotgun. Look at this. On a crossing pattern, Bostic stays with his man. Straight man coverage. Bryant is the receiver. This is a Lynn Swan type of receiver, too. I really like what Bryant can do. He is nicked up, and he's out of the action right now. Third down. Ball spotted at the 27. It's about third and 15. The handoff is to Fulner, and he's got nothing. Burgash is there. Mike Warren, excuse me, number 40. In on the tackle with Mike Lemoran, number 93. There come the Boo Birds, Sam. Even though uh, Purdue has run the ball well, people here want to see the ball in the air. They've had Greasy and Herman and, and Phipps and people like that, and they don't like it on the crowd. Purdue has done very well. Back to its own 19-yard line as they go on offense. Wolverines leading 7-3. to three. Very close game, though Michigan has had the edge for most of this quarter. Stan Edwards gets about a yard before he's thrown back. Chris Scott is there, the sophomore number 99, along with Casey Moore, number 98. Here's a meeting on the sideline as uh, they're trying to figure out what they'll do if they get the football back. The big tackle there, number 75, Tom Jaleski, just to the right of your screen, Royer, one of the guards. So if Purdue can get the football back, 152 remaining, Michigan has it second down. Spot the ball to 21, it's second and eight for the Wolverines. Carter is wide to the right side. Long count by Smith. Makes the draw. Going up top to the right side for Carter. He's got it at the 42-yard line. Third reception of the game for Anthony Carter. Boy, he's double covered and still. Smith does a good job getting the ball to him. It really does. What an athlete here because Taylor and uh, Greg were very, very fine there. This is the double coverage. He's going to turn around and make the catch on the right side even though he wants the ball on the left shoulder. Boy, that's an athlete. 161 pounds. We saw the block he made at the goal line on Lawrence Ricks' run that was called back. That's just an excellent football player. Fred Brockington, number 25, is in the lineup for Michigan. Goes wide to the right. Carter with three receptions for the game, 49 yards. 
Smith on first and ten. Michigan their own 42 with 115 to go in the half. Handoff is to Edwards. Gets about a yard and not much more. Time running out in this half. And after that big game, I would think maybe they'd go into the air and try to get another score on the board. David Fry made the tackle on Stan Edwards. Close kind of cagey now. Let's see if he does uh, try and get Carter isolated. Here's the uh, timeout once again, and Purdue is coming over to visit, but Michigan will stay on the field. Don't forget, Canadian Football League action at its best. As they go for the Great Cup in Canada, we'll be live at Olympic Stadium in Montreal for the Great Cup Championship Sunday, November 22nd, live at 1.30 Eastern Time, 10.30 a.m. Pacific on ESPN, your total sports network. We have brought you exciting Canadian Football League action all season long. What do you call that guy? <laughs> Is that George King uh, <laughs> doing double duty as AD and also the mascot? <laughs> We spent a little time with George last night. Had an opportunity to work a national final with a referee, a national final with George King, was playing John Wooden. We were talking a little basketball last night. Quite a guy. You know, his basketball coach, Gene Kitty, was a good football player at Kansas State and then with the Steelers. So um, it's, it's really a nice, healthy situation here. I got to believe they like what they see in this, uh, in this campus and the whole area. Good sports program here. 106 to go in the first half. Michigan leading it 7 to 3. 27-yard touchdown pass from Steve Smith to Craig Dunaway in the first quarter after Purdue had scored first on a 26-yard field goal by Tim Clark. Second down nine at the 43-yard line. Late in the first half, let's see what Michigan does. Smith to throw, no, quarterback draw. This is what he scored on late in the first half last week. This time he's brought down by Brock Spack, the sophomore inside linebacker, number 58, after a pickup of a couple of yards on the play. They'll go without a huddle. It was a nice play. Wolfolk leading a planned play. Here they come without a huddle. Clock running, 45 seconds left in the half. Smith, seven carries, 24 yards. He's the second leading rusher on this team. Looks to throw deep over the middle, and it's caught by Bean. He dropped it. Vince Bean had it and left it behind him. Bean had something going there. Only Bob Lashley to beat for a touchdown. And he just uh, isn't able to come up with it. Once again, the ball is thrown. It's a crossing pattern. The ball is thrown perfectly right in, right in his hands. And he just drops it. Didn't seem to have his hands set the way he wanted to bring up a punting situation. So Purdue will get it back for at least one or two plays. Well thrown football by Steve Smith. Bracken at his own 33-yard line. Five seconds to go in the first half. Michigan just gets it away. They let it drop, and it's down by Betts, number 82. The tight end must come down at the 10 yard line. And I think it'd be a fairly safe bet that uh, Purdue will run out the clock with this kind of field position. Purdue going on offense. Don't forget, great tennis for you on ESPN. 1981 Federation Cup from Japan, United States versus South Korea, Sunday, November 21st, 2 o'clock Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, on ESPN, your total sports network. Scott Campbell hasn't thrown the ball all that much in the first half. Quarterback sneak, and they will let the clock run out. It's a close football game. Crowd is kind of quiet because Purdue, after a good start in which they were deep in Michigan territory three times in the first quarter, has sort of uh, slowed down now. Michigan has uh, shut down the running game, and Campbell uh, hasn't gone to the air all that much. Time running down, and we have come to the end of the first half here at Ross Age Stadium in West Lafayette, Indiana, with the score the Michigan Wolverines 7. The Purdue Boilermakers 3. We will be back with more college football for you in just a few minutes. Right now, stay tuned for Sports Center and an update on all the sports news. Edwards deep kickoff is deep to Anthony Carter at the one yard line. Looks for a hole. He's got it. Tries to break outside. And had he broken that tackle, it might have been good by Anthony Carter. In any event, an excellent return by Carter. Back to the 34-yard line. Roosevelt Barnes, number 42, made the stop. Boy, is he a threat, and he's only a junior. 
He is something. Look at the average 17 yards of play. You mentioned Roosevelt Barnes. That's the basketball player who is a pretty good uh, football player. He gets a lot of sacks. Kind of an interesting guy. Okay, Michigan on offense. To start the second half, they have two tight ends in there, and Dunaway's in motion. Hand off to Edwards, the fullback. Gets a yard. Four men send them back. On offense for Michigan, the center is Tom Dixon. Stephen Humphreys, Kurt Becker, the guards. William Bubba Paris and Ed Moransky, the tackles. Norm Betts, number 82, is the tight end. Craig Dunaway is the second tight end in there. Anthony Carter, number one, the flanker back. Butch Wolfolk, number 24. Stan Edwards, number 32 in the backfield. Vince Bean, number 27, is the split end to the left side. Smith on second and nine to Carter, his fourth reception. And look at eight men surround Anthony Carter. Boy, that is amazing how he's able to find the seam and get open because everybody and his brother watches number one, and somehow he finds a soft spot of the zone. He picks up the first down. Smith threw that one right on the numbers. The defense for Purdue. Mike Moreland, Casey Moore, and Matt Hernandez up front. David Fry, Brock Spack, Mark Brown, and Andy Gladstone, the linebackers. Robert Williams, Marcus McKinney, Tim Seneff, and Derek Taylor, the deep backs. First and 10, Michigan at midfield. Smith to Wolfo, who had 40 yards in the first half and has no yards in this carry. Brock Spack, Mark Brown, 58 and 59, the inside linebackers stopping Butch Wolfo. Well, we'll see a little paratrooper action right here. The backers are supposed to make most of the tackles on a football team, and they do it right here. It's number 59 just flies, flies through the air, gets some help from his teammates back. They do lead the team in tackles, and normally that's going to be the stat that's uh, very prevalent. There's Butch with his coach. On second and 10, Smith over the middle, and it's complete. Once again, he goes to Anthony Carter. And where early in the season, Smith couldn't get the ball to him. Now he is finding him every game. Fifth reception for Carter. This guy does have 28 career TD receptions, and he is able to find that open spot. He's amazing. You take a look at him on the field where we're down early, Sam. He's got little bitty pins for legs, but boy, I tell you what, he flies around. I really like him. Plus, he's tough. He'll block you. That's an I like. Anthony Carter, five receptions for 80 yards. First and 10, Michigan at the Purdue 35. Draw play, Wolfolk fumbled, and Purdue's got it. Third turnover for Michigan in the game. Brock back makes the recovery. It looked like the handoff was on the pads, but take another look. It's just a reverse pivot. They get a lead block from Edwards. Looking at the hole, it's a good handoff. Wolfolk just can't get the handle, and uh, Purdue comes up with it. Number 58, Brock Spack, a guy we've been talking about all day long. The leading tackler on this ball club comes up with a big turnover, and that's very important to slow down the uh, Wolverine momentum. Okay, so now Purdue trailing 7-3. Good field position, their own 35. Fulner and King in the backfield, the surprise starters. This is Fulner carrying, and up to about the 39. Got about four on the play. The Purdue offense, Scott Campbell is the quarterback. Fulmer and King, the setbacks. Linville and Bryant, the wide receivers. Paul Royer is the center. Ray Gunner and Clavon Fields, the guards. And Jim Fritchie and Tom Jaleski, the tackles. The bookend, Jaleski, 6'6", 273. Fritchie, 6'8", 268. Scott Campbell, sophomore quarterback. We're two, seeing two fine sophomore quarterbacks really sparkling in the Big Ten. Campbell handing off inside to King, the fullback across the 40 before he's brought down by Ben Needham number 97 Jerry Burgay number 15 in on the stop the defense for Michigan three man front Tony Osmond 78 Al Sinsich 53 Woodenford Caraway 63 linebackers Ben Needham Mike Warren Paul Gergash and Robert Thompson fine linebackers deep backs Burgay Jackson Bostic and Carpenter Third and two for Purdue. Campbell throwing short, and it's complete to Fulner out of the backfield up at the 48. It's good for a first down. Mike Lemeran, the linebacker, Brian Carpenter, the left cornerback, bringing down Jeff Fulner, but it's a first down for Purdue. Well, Campbell is very quick. He is a rollout scrambler type of quarterback, as Bud Wilkinson alluded to at the top. He's got very quick feet, completely different from Mark Herman, who's a star for four years. Herman hits you on anticipation. Campbell waits till you make the cut. First and ten. For Purdue at their own 48-yard line. 
drive for them early in the second half. Fulner carrying across midfield out of the Michigan 48-yard line. Mike Boren, number 40, made the tackle. About a pickup of four on the play, and Jeff Fulner is getting very close to 100 yards rushing, and uh, that hasn't been done against Michigan in a long time since uh, early last season. If he does it, you can give credit to that offensive line, but also to that fullback, Bruce King. This guy is really impressive. He's taking on the backers and stuffing them. Second and six, Purdue. Faking the handoff is Campbell, throws short, it's complete to the tight end Benson, and he's down to the 34-yard line. Cliff Benson, the tight end, a good receiver, makes the reception, Evan Cooper makes the tackle, another first down for Purdue. Very pretty play, a little play action, anytime you cross a tight end with play action, as we get another look, fake to King, and he blocks well after the fake. Nobody is going to be anywhere around the tight end Benson on the little uh, crossing pattern. Purdue's got something going. They have moved from there, 34, to the Michigan 34. Bob Pruitt, number 40, is in the backfield, along with Jeff Fulner. And off is to Pruitt inside, gets a couple of yards, down to the 32. Ben Needham, number 97, in on the tackle. Mike Boren, number 40, was there. Al Sincich, number 53, the nose guard, all combining on the stop. Uh, Bob Pruitt, a senior fullback, number 40. Goes 5'11", 200. Smart game plan, Sam. They either trap, in this case it was with Gunner, and then they get that line, lineman playing soft, and they'll wham block him with Bruce King. Just a very good game plan. They're running inside the tackle as they have all day long. And a good look at big number 70, Clavon Fields. A guard goes 6'7", 277. Fulner breaks it outside. Good game by Fulner. He turned nothing into a first down pickup down to the 23-yard line. Picked up nine on the play. Evan Cooper knocked him out of bounds. Just drive blocking by Jalecki and Benson, but the key, once again, was King came in and loaded up at the line of scrimmage, and then hard running by Fuller as he comes close to that 100-yard mark. Looks like he picked up about nine there, so he's very close. 19 carries, 96 yards for Jeff Fulner, just a sophomore, starting today a surprise starter for Purdue. Boilermakers on the Michigan 23, first and 10. They continue to keep the ball on the ground. Fulner to the 20. So Jim Young has decided he's going to go with the running game, and so far it's worked. Paul Gergash made the tackle. Well, you know, for years, Sam, it's been smash football in the Big Ten, and Jimmy Young, one of the guys who turned it around by throwing the ball. But today, going back to uh, just, hey, here it is. We're going to line up and knock your socks off. And it's been a very good attack. They just haven't got in the end zone. Let's see if they can pay off this time. With it. Second and seven. Bryant wide to the left. Lenville wide right. Campbell will throw looking for Bryant. In the corner of the end zone, incomplete. He was covered by Brian Carpenter. Fans wanted a pass interference call. But good coverage by number nine, Ryan Carpenter. That's a very good athlete. He's quick. He's long jump 24-4. He's a leading interceptor a year ago. Sprained an ankle and missed some time this year. But uh, the fans didn't like him. I just thought he was all over Brian. Did, a, uh, did his job the way you're supposed to. Nine minutes, eight seconds to go in the third quarter. This is the 10th play of the drive for Purdue, which started on their own 34 after the fumble recovery. They're on the Michigan 20-yard line, third and seven. Michigan leading seven to Look three. Look for the tight end, crossing. Campbell sends the back in motion. That's King. Looking left. Throws short for Bryant. Coming inside. Bryant to the five. Brought down by Tony Jackson. Good play. Excellent play. The two things that defensive coaches do not like to see happen are an unbalanced line and motion. And in this case, they use motion out of the backfield to set up Brian. We'll take another look. Here it is. Brian is just going to delay and then run a little slant right there. The motion took the secondary out of there. There is an injury on the field, but Brian puts his team in great shape. Looks like Paul Gergash, the fine line. Lafayette, Indiana, Michigan leading Purdue 7 to 3, but Purdue knocking on the door at the Michigan 5. Gergash walked off the field under his own power. Seems to be okay. Big series coming here. First and goal for Purdue. Scott Campbell asks for quiet. Steve Bryant split wide to the right. Rest of the team tight. This is Bryant in motion. Campbell handing off inside. Touchdown! It is Jeff Fulmer, the man who has run so brilliantly in this game for Purdue, throwing in from five yards out over the 100-yard mark.
marked 102, I believe he has. They came up against a 6-5 gap defense, and they just got uh, everybody blocking down, walled it off. Gunner and Pritchard did the job, and Foner is having himself some kind of a debut against Michigan, ball club that has uh, played pretty well down through the years. Look at this kid run. Talk about having a nose for the goal line. So the Wolverines, with 8.38 left, have a 9-7 lead, kicking the extra point. First time this season, anyone's gone over 100 yards rushing against Michigan. Clark for the extra point. It is good. We have 8.38 to go in the third quarter, and Purdue has regained the lead. They had a 3-0 lead early in the game on a field goal by Clark. Michigan scored on a touchdown pass from Smith to tight end Craig Dunaway to take a 7-3 lead in the first quarter. That was the score at halftime, but now the Boilermakers, driving 66 yards, go in for the touchdown on the run by Jeff Fulmer and lead it 10-7. Well, you know, the three turnovers certainly have been big, and this third one finally pays off for Purdue as they do take it down. The key play in the drive, Sam, was the slam pattern to Bryant. He uh, just ran a little delay. It opened up. He took the ball to the five-yard line. Then on the first play from scrimmage, just an excellent effort uh, up front. Boner, what a way to go over 100 yards. <laughs> this guy is, uh, is doing his job for it's the first really time. really something. Uh, certainly a surprise starter. The leading rushers, Smith, Jordan, and Jones, not in the game at all uh, from the line of scrimmage. 11 plays. They say 65 yards, and a lap time is 4 minutes and 12 seconds. Jeff Fulner credited with a six-yard run for the touchdown. The crowd is very much involved now. The Purdue uh, bench is standing. They're very excited. And of course, that uh, adrenaline is flowing now. Third period has been a good period all year long for Purdue. They've been very tough on defense. Walt Trapeza kicking off. Carter and Edwards deep. It's Anthony Carter. It's off his hands. It'll be a touchback. And Michigan will start from the 20-yard line. And they will have to come back as they trail 10-7. to 7. Don't forget, as Purdue has been a good third-quarter team, Michigan has been a great fourth-quarter team all season long as well. And they have a tremendous wide receiver in Carter. We've uh, watched him today. He has the five catches. Listen to the crowd. They really are getting involved. And this is an interesting set of downs for uh, Michigan. Crowd of 69,000 plus here at Ross Age Stadium. Just a great day for college football. Beautiful. Couldn't ask for a better day. Smith is the quarterback. Edwards and Wolfolk in the backfield with him. Wolfolk the tailback. Smith still has the ball. Makes the turn. Gets only a couple. Three yards. Drops back. Number 58. Make it also number 59, Mark Brown. Number 34, Marcus McKinney in on the tackle. They were really able to drag it out that time. In 71, Hernandez did a good job of uh, just fighting his man off and letting the help come. So it's a very short game. Well, it's second and seven for Purdue. Rather, for Michigan on their own 23-yard line. Jeff Fulner, who is making his first collegiate start, has 21 carries for 105 yards. Michigan has 27 carries for just 87 yards total. Smith having trouble hearing the crowd. Look to the referee, to the back judge for some help. And they call timeout. Got to run a play quick here. The crowd will stay with it uh, right. for four or five minutes. You got to run a play quick. Come up and say go on the first sound and get after it, else uh, you're in serious trouble. Wolverines regroup. Second and seven, Purdue really aroused. Last year at Ann Arbor, Michigan defeated Purdue 26 to nothing. Two years ago here, Purdue won at 24-21. Again, Smith looks for help. The back judge says, call the play. Okay, Smith says, I can't hear. Referee comes in. Well, look at uh, Jim Young. He is just livid on the sidelines, hollering at the, uh, at the referee, Otho Courts. Oh. Jim, you put the vein back in your forehead. <laughs> Is he upset? A little bit. He wants to put some pressure on the young quarterback, Steve Smith. And Bo Schembechler. Well, he's been through this a few times. You know, you win a lot. <laughs> Look at Jimmy Young. We talked to him before the game. He was mild-mannered. But he's got himself a lead now. Look at the crowd now. They're really involved. you got to run a play no matter what. Second and seven for Michigan. Smith with a long count. He still says, I can't hear. Back judge says, go. And once again, they call timeout. 
I think you're right, Irv. I think they've got to go. You got to so, run a play. Go on that first crowd. down. Now they now they charge Purdue with a timeout, right, and Jim Young is on the field. Right. Jimmy Young are having a discussion right now, and Jimmy Young really is a nice, mild-mannered guy. I know you're not going to believe it watching this on television, but he's a nice family man. He's a good person. I know him well. <laughs> right now, he's <laughs> look at this. Well, I tell you, one nice thing about refereeing, all you got to do is start out perfect and then get better. He's just saying, listen, <laughs> what can I do? The crowd's, the crowd is is rooting. He's got to call a play. Make him call the play. That's what Jim Young is saying. Michigan, just you have to run a player. This crowd is going to keep it up. They're really involved. This is their ball club. This is West Lafayette, Indiana, and uh, they want they, they want some action. It is tough to beat Purdue here at Ross Aid Stadium. And the numbers prove it. They have lost at home only twice in the last four years. Yeah, this is a good college crowd. They're really getting involved, and in you know they're booing, but it's all good natured. And, uh, they just—they're doing what they want to do, <laughs> what they're supposed to do. They're getting after it. They are rooting for their heroes, their college heroes, the Boilermakers, who got off to a five-and-two start this year, but they've lost their last two to Ohio State, and Iowa, and they're trying to salvage this season. Make it a winning season with a win here, their last home game of the season. Second and seven. We'll try again. They get it off. Wolfo turns the corner. 30. Had some room outside. Got tripped up and goes down at the 33. Well, they looked like they had something going until Steve Bragg, the strong safety, came up and, uh, and made the play because it looked good. Spot the ball at the 33-yard line. It's a first down for Michigan. About 10 minutes to get one playoff. You know, each play lasts about six seconds, and if a football player will just go hard for that amount of time, uh, that's really all you play, six seconds during the play. Add it up how many snaps it takes. So if you go hard during that time, you really have good things happen. Both of 13 carries, 47 yards. <laughs> Once again, Smith pleading for help. The back judge says go, and Smith looks again, and this time they stop the clock and call timeout. And wait for things. And now Jim Young is jumping up and down on the sideline. Now Bo Schembecker is upset. Here's Young walking out on the field. Now, it really isn't funny, but you got to know both guys to appreciate what's going on here. This is the teacher and the pupil. And Jim Young wants this one bad, real bad. Bo is coming back in and telling him, go on the first sound. Look, look at Jim Young. I can't believe him. <laughs> I would say he is questioning that official's birth in any question. <laughs> now, it looks like another timeout has been charged to Purdue. And if, if so, that's two that's been charged to the Boilermakers. So there I can understand where Jim Young would be very upset because that's costing him a couple of timeouts he might need later on in this game. Jim Young, the John Denver lookalike, is very <laughs> upset right now. <laughs> What's happened, though? We're laughing a little bit. goes. First and ten, Smith is trapped and brought down. And the fans love that, Irv. Yeah, they really are involved because this is the enemy. Number 71 for Purdue made the first hit. Hernandez wasn't able to hold on, but he slowed him down until the pursuit caught up. And then Chris Scott, and he called his name a bunch when they said, got it done. Jim Young is just absolutely bananas on the near sideline, jumping up and down. Screaming. Well, yelling. he'll never have a heart attack that way. Get it out. <laughs> you know, if you hold it in, you get sick. That's why Jimmy's doing it. Second and ten for Michigan. Wolverines trailing Purdue. Ten to seven. Here in the third quarter. Smith swings it out to Wolfo. Looking for some help. Cuts in nicely. Good run by Wolfo. Up to the 46-yard line. That's the first down for Michigan. Wolfo coming out of the backfield. Making his... Seventh reception of the season. Marcus McKinney and Matt Hernandez made the stop. Well executed with just a quick little screen. Bubba Paris and Stephen Humphreys got over in front of Wolfo. And you let a guy like that loose in the secondary, and that's what's going to happen. He'll get you the first down and more. Ball spotted at the 46-yard line. Bo Schembechler looks it over. Wolverines need a good march here. They're trailing 10-7. And now we have timeout called. As a couple of players come in. Okay, now they get the clock started. 6.15 to go in the third quarter. Purdue 10, Michigan 7. First and 10 for the Wolverines. Five-man front 
for Purdue. Wolfolk carries. Couple of yards. That's all. This is an aroused Purdue defense. Rocks back and Mark Brown, 58 and 59. The linebackers, Matt Hernandez, 71, also in there on the stop of Butch Wolfolk. Those backers have played well all year long, but the problem has been up front. And today, Scott, Moore, and Hernandez have really done their uh, show. Look at this. Because of the crowd, the timeouts remaining. Purdue has only one, and that's why Jim Young is so upset. Apparently at the crowd more than the official. Second and eight for Michigan. Smith looking for Anthony Carter. He's got him inside the 40 of Purdue. Sixth reception of the game for Anthony Carter. Double cover him, triple cover him. He still gets open. The thing I like about this kid, 161 pounds, he'll run across the middle. You get a lot of receivers that like to run the cute routes. How many go across the middle? This kid will. That's a tough man. So Michigan has really got something going. They're down to the 39-yard line. Every time they've been in trouble, they've gone to uh, Carter on a slant. i got to believe they're setting up a... A little give and go, a little chair pattern, whatever your terminology is. It's first and ten for Michigan at the Purdue 39. End around for Anthony Carter. Has a blocker in front of him. Goes outside and finally pulled out of bounds at the 35. Picked up about four on the play. Robert Williams grabbed him and threw him out of bounds. Williams number 36. Short pickup for Anthony Carter. Williams really did a good job that time because he stayed at home. It looked like they had something going. I like this guy. He was a tailback. He's played a lot of baseball. Just a good athlete. He did stay at home because Carter can fly, and he had decent blocking out there that time with Humphreys and Paris. Another look. Here comes Carter. Williams will stay at home. He fights off the block right there. Instead of going down, he just grabs the shirt and gets it uh, done. Gets a little help. He blocks back number 58. Second and six, Michigan. They have two tight ends in there. Betts right and Dunaway left. Blitz is on. Smith throws out to the right side. Caught by Anthony Carter at the 25-yard line. Good timing pattern. Number three, Taylor, was on and very tough. All he did is time it through to a spot. And, uh, boy, that's uh, what coaching is all about. Carter turned around at the right time. 4.48 to go in this third quarter. Purdue leading 10-7. But Michigan with a first and 10 at the Purdue 25-yard line. Anthony Carter came into this game with 33 receptions, has seven in this game. Smith. Audible at the line, and somebody jumped. Kurt Becker, the right guard, number 65, moved too soon. The senior, one of the top linemen in the country. Very consistent player, and he'll be very upset with himself. He just... Uh, Got a little excited with the snap count. He's 6'6", 260 right next to him. Moransky is 6'7", 275. That's not bad size. Becker will be a first-round draft choice. He really does have an outstanding uh, chance to possibly be the Outland winner or the Lombardi uh, winner. Just a good football player. And, of course, he comes out of a great program. We may get a look at him in the Senior Bowl, which is coming up on ESPN exclusively live from Mobile, Alabama. First and 15 for Michigan at the Purdue 30. Wolfo carries. Good room for Wolfo. Look at him pick up yardage down to the 17-yard line. Picked up 13 on the play. Casey Moore, number 98. Marcus McKinney, number 34, in on the tackle. Make it a 12-yard gain to the 18 for Butch Wolfo, his best run of the game. Well, the reason went so well. Look at that block right there by 32. Edwards, a guy we haven't talked about a whole lot today. He really drilled Steve Bragg. So Wolfo gets his ball club down. Obviously, they're in field goal range. Bo wants six here. Anthony Carter out of the game. Vince Bean is the wide receiver to the right. Double tight end on second and three. Smith to Wolfo. Takes it right side. Tries to cut back. It's short of the first down. Got maybe two yards on the play before the gang surrounded him and threw him down. Good team defense that time. They just were able to string it out. Wolfolk has really been a factor in this uh, drive. He hadn't been that much in the first half. You know, he's just a good football player. He'll get a blow now, and Lawrence Ricks will come in. We saw Ricks take the ball down to the goal line, and they had a holding penalty, which cost Michigan uh, a touchdown early. Michigan driving from its own 20-yard line to the Purdue 17 at third and two. Double tight end. Edwards and Ricks in the backfield. Smith might have been delaying 
the game. Flags go down. He was checking off at the line of scrimmage. And there's the call. Delay of the game against Michigan. So instead of third and two, make it third and seven. Those timeouts are really going to be a factor late in this ball game. You've got to believe it's going to go to the wire. And you hate to go into the a fourth period with only one timeout, and that's exactly what Purdue has left. This will bring up a third and seven, uh, Sam. And in the past, Bo has gone to the option here. A lot of people look for him to throw. Carter is back in, and he's been very effective on the slant. Or they could come with the option with Wolfe. Carter is wide left. Vince Bean is wide right on third and seven for Michigan. Smith makes the handoff out to the left side of Carter. He dropped it. Covered by Derek Taylor. Might have gotten a hand in there to knock it down. Good play by Derek Taylor. And the Purdue Boilermakers have held. Well, listen, this Taylor has been uh, flip-flopping each side of the field. A lot of people thought this might be interference. He looks like he just got a hand in and stripped him. They call him Hackensack. He was a running back extremely fast, and he stops a drive here. We'll uh, get a, and apparently, uh, apparently we'll get a field goal here. Ali Haji Sheik will attempt a 40-yard field goal straight away to try and tie the game. 2.19 to go in this third quarter, where the Purdue Boilermakers have gotten tough. They have held Michigan. And Haji Sheik mixes again on a field goal try. This is Fulner carrying. Not much there. No gain on the play for Jeff Fulner, who has scored the touchdown in the game for Purdue. Spot the ball at the 22. Al Sinsich, the nose guard, made the stop. Second miss by uh, the field goal kicker. Those soccer style kickers have the great leg, but you know, when they get into a little bit of a slump and start hooking the ball, anything can happen, and that's exactly what we're seeing today. I gotta believe he's thinking about it. Scott Campbell, the quarterback. Jeff Fulner, Bruce King in the backfield. Fulner carries maybe a yard or two before he's brought down by Paul Gergash, number 50, the left inside linebacker. Here's Jeff Fulner, who's had a fine day rushing in his first collegiate start. He's a sophomore. There you see the numbers on Fulner. Plus a six-yard carry for a touchdown. I run 15 to go in the third quarter. Sorry, Eric. Well, I didn't think that Purdue would uh, rush the ball 23 times, let alone one individual. Thought they'd all they do is throw today. They have kept it on the ground. Low scoring, close game. King in motion on third and 10. Campbell with time. Throws in a crowd to Bryant. Bryant with a leaping grab at the 39-yard line. First down, Purdue. This is an excellent catch. We've got an opportunity to see two of the better receivers in the United States. We've talked a lot about Carter, but there ain't anything wrong with this kid. Look at the leaping ability as he just goes up. He's an exceptional receiver, good speed. I like the routes that he runs. Very precision type of uh, pass receiver. He's a senior, a junior college transfer in his second year at Purdue. He'll be graduating. Look for him to go high in the draft. Deep in the middle and almost intercepted by Bostic. Number 13, it was intended for Cliff Benson, the tight end, thrown a little high, and Bostic should have had the interception. Yeah, Bostic should have. The man who was open was uh, Bryant streaking down the left side. This is into a crowd. Not good judgment this time by Campbell. Bostic has the interception, and the tight end prevents it by uh, getting a hand on it. Second down and 10 for Purdue. We have 41 seconds to go in the third quarter. Purdue leading Michigan 10-7. to as you watch college football 81, Scott Campbell, 7 for 12. He usually throws a lot more. Campbell, inside handoff is to the fullback, Bruce King, up to about the 43-yard line. Picked up four, Mike Boren, the right inside linebacker, Mike Lemoran, the outside linebacker, making the stop. And it'll be third and long for Purdue. It's the early goal, and they've come out with the big splits. They've either trapped or occasionally ram blocked using King. Once in a while, they give the football to King to keep people honest. But it's been a very solid game plan. Jim Young has found himself a couple of running backs as he sat down his normal starters, Jimmy Smith and Wally Jones, and started Jeff Fulner and Bruce King, and they've done quite a job. King in motion, Campbell on third and six. Plenty of time. Swings it out. It's complete to the tight end. Benson fights his way to the 37, short of a first down. Mike Boren, the inside linebacker, and the other one on the other side, Paul Gergash, making the stop on Cliff Benson, and Purdue will kick the ball away as Jim Boucher comes out. 
Good tight, punt. End, tight end screen that time, Sam, and I believe that Jalecki uh, was... Ross Aid Stadium in West Lafayette, Indiana. Do you believe the score, Herb? 10 to 7? Uh, no, I really thought it'd be a lot higher. I uh, thought we'd see an aerial barrage here, but it's been a good football game. If you appreciate different things that are going on, boy, it, uh, it really has been good. Jim Boshe, junior punter, is standing back on his own 31-yard line, and there is Mr. Anthony Carter, always a threat to break one. He's standing on his 17. Boshe has kicked well in this game. Had a 53-yarder earlier. Gets this one away. Good high kick. There'll be no run back here. Fair catch call for by Carter. Okay. He wobbles under the wall and holds on at the 23-yard line. Michigan will go on offense. This has been their quarter, the fourth quarter. They have dominated teams in the fourth quarter all season long. Don't forget, more great college football action coming up for you next week. Notre Dame against Penn State. You'll see it Sunday night. Nebraska goes against Oklahoma Monday night at midnight. Purdue against Indiana Monday afternoon. And then it's Baylor at Texas also Monday afternoon on ESPN. Your network for college football action. Smith still with the ball in the option. Holds on to it and drives up to the 30-yard line. Don't forget, we may have some schedule changes because of NCAA contractual obligations. So stay tuned to ESPN for our schedule of college action. We'll update you during the week. There could be some very interesting changes, too. <laughs> some great games yes, coming sir. up as we get down toward bowl time. Yeah, we really are. And uh, uh, I'll tell you what, we've got a couple ball clubs here that are still very much involved. You know what Michigan is thinking. Rose Bowl, they got to come back. They picked up six on that last play. The handoff inside. Nice hole for Stan Edwards. So the fullback, who hasn't carried in a while, busts through up to the 40-yard line. That's a first down. The outside linebackers, Roosevelt Barnes and David Fry, made the stop. Uh, you know, you ignore your fullback a little while, and that's Bo's strategy, has been through the years. And you give it to him, and he hits the hole quickly. Got a good block from Tom Dixon, who's played very well all year long, particularly against Iowa, and Kurt Becker, the All-American candidate. Edwards, six carries, 25 yards. Under 14 minutes to go in the game. Purdue leading Michigan 10 to 7. Edwards carries again. Hops over one man. It's about two yards on the stop. Good play inside by Chris Scott, number 99. Boys, he played a fine game. And Mark Brown, the freshman linebacker, number 59. Norm Betts, a tight end, lined up legally in the backfield that time. It was a lead blocker. Normally, that clogs things up. Uh, it's, it's more for short yardage, and the play just doesn't pay off. Uh, brings up the second and long. We'll see if uh, they put it up to Carter or come with the option. Carter comes to the left side. Vince Bean goes to the right. Edwards and Wolfolk in the backfield on second and eight for Michigan. Long count. Smith still has it on the option. Good gain. Boy, he's tough to bring down as he crosses the 45, gets up to the 46-yard line. Pick up a four on the play. It'll be third and four. Marcus McKinney and Bob Lashley, two defensive backs, making the stop on Steve Smith. Well, 42, Roosevelt Barnes tried to arm tackle Smith, and he just can't do that with these good backs. He didn't stick a shoulder in them, and that's the reason why it's uh, third and very short instead of third and long. Smith had come into this game averaging 4.9 yards per carry. He's had 11 carries, 37 yards thus far. Big play. Third and four. Crowd alive for Purdue. Michigan trailing 10 to 7. Smith to throw. Looking left. Throwing deep over the middle for Bean. It's incomplete. Good coverage by Robert Williams. Flag goes down. Late flag looks like number 39 from Purdue is the guy they'll nail, and that's Steve Bragg. We'll take another look. Wanted to go to Carter on the slant. He was covered, so he uh, goes up top right here in a little crossing pattern, and the flag will come on the right side of the screen from the, uh, the field judge in this case. So that's a big break for the Wolverines. I think they called it on Robert Williams, the cornerback, who is going one-on-one -on -one against Vince Bean. They'll spot the ball on the 29-yard line. And a big, big break for Michigan on the pass interference penalty against Purdue. First and 10 Wolverines. 12 18 to go in the game. Michigan trailing Purdue 10 to 7. And off the Wolf Looks for some room. Squeezes it through down to the 25. 
Not a lot of timing on that play. Short yardage. Robert Williams, the guy who's been called for interference and in Brock Spack, come up with the play. As Wolfolk getting up. He's had to work hard for the yardage. Jim Young pacing the sidelines. He knows one thing. He lost a couple of timeouts in the third quarter with the crowd making all that noise. Purdue wound up being charged with two timeouts. Wolfolk, 17 carries, 67 yards. Second and seven for Michigan. On the Purdue, 26. Smith has the ball, makes the turn. Good run, watch out. 10-yard line, he's going in. Steve Smith with his 11th touchdown run of the year. And Michigan has regained the lead. Boy, is he some kind of threat. Well, it really is. They went to the short side of the field with the option. And a lot of uh, people will feel that the cornerback should have made the play. But his assignment was the pitch man. And Steve Smith just does an excellent job. Once again, he fakes to Edwards. Edwards gets a block on the backer. The cornerback goes with the pitch man. And Smith finds a crease. Gets a good block out there from his tight end, Norm Betts. And then it's all Smith as he breaks a tackle and gets in. So uh, they regain the lead. He runs well, good speed, he's elusive, and he's durable. He bounces off tackles. He is really something. Smith, a fine runner, and he's come up with big touchdown runs in every game we've seen him. The game against Michigan State, he scored a 37-yard touchdown run that broke the back of the Spartans. And last week against Illinois, it was his touchdown run of 42 yards, which uh, put Michigan into the lead. So Smith doing it all. Ali Haji Sheik for the extra point. Now it's Purdue that will have to come back. 26-yard run by Steve Smith, the sophomore quarterback, putting Michigan back in the lead. Well, of course, that pass interference call really helped. But one of the things that doesn't show up in the statistics, Sid Edwards, after he uh, got the ball in his belly on the fake of the option, was able to seal off the linebacker. And when the cornerback takes the pitch man, if the safety doesn't fill, the backer's got to get over. And he couldn't because of Edwards. So give Sid Edwards a lot of credit. Six plays, 76 yards, three minutes, 22 seconds. Big 34-yard pass interference penalty helping Michigan, and Smith going in for the touchdown. Good kickoff by Ali Haji Sheik through the end zone. You don't run back many kicks against Michigan, either on kickoffs or punts. They've got Ali Haji Sheik, who can really get the foot into it on the kickoffs, and Don Bracken, who's an excellent punter. So their special teams are... Very, very good. Purdue will go on offense from their own 20-yard line, trailing 14 to 10. They led 3-0, trailed 7-3, led 10-7, now trail 14 to 10. Scott Campbell, the quarterback, running backs is still Jeff Fulner, 41, Bruce King, 37. Campbell on first down, swings it out to Fulner, 20, breaks to the outside, and stood up at the 25-yard line. Pick up a five on the play. Still a good first down pickup. Jerry Burgai, the cornerback, number 15, made the stop on Jeff Fulner. Well, that was a good hit. It looks like Burgai is uh, slow to get up over there. They did cover it uh, tremendously. But <laughs> I'll tell you what, this young sophomore will punish you. He really hurt uh, number 15, Burgai. Ooh, you can see him. His hand or his arm hurt. Now he's being helped off the field. So take another look it is just a simple swing pass and uh, this guy is something else well over 100 yards plus he can catch the ball as we see here comes up he's going to put his head down and take on Burgai that's a great collision he can mm. give out some punishment he's still pushing second and five Purdue shipped out of the eye wide on the right side is Bryant Campbell still has the ball it's only a couple of yards and a big third down play will face Purdue. Mike Warren and Ben Needham, two linebackers, making the stop on Scott Campbell. They trapped this option here, kind of a different look. They have been faking and doing this inside trap right here, so now they come back with the trap blocking, but they're going to run the option. But Campbell is a little tentative and gets only short yardage. Running back did uh, get a piece of a couple of people, and King's been doing that all day long. He's a tough kid. Third and four as they spotted it at the 26. Bruce King is in motion. Campbell the throw, looking for the right side, looking for Bryant. It's deflected and incomplete. Batted up in the air. Needham had a shot for the interception, ran by the ball, and it dropped incomplete as he was looking for Steve Bryant over the middle. Well, that's great coaching. Keith Bostic is going to stunt because of the set. He does get picked off, but he puts the pressure on. Take a look, see if it is interference. Well, with the deflection, 
There's no problem at all, though, because of the deflection at the line of scrimmage. Fans want interference. Doesn't happen, and Purdue will have to punt it. Looks like Gergash, Paul Gergash, making the deflection on the play for Michigan. Jim Boucher is in deep punt formation. Standing back at his own 11-yard line. Michigan leading 14 to 10, 10 8 to go in the game. Carter is deep safety for Purdue. Short kick to the right side. It drops down, now rolls to Carter. He picks it up and swarmed under. Well, Carter thought he'd surprise Purdue and run by that wall of tacklers, but he couldn't do it. He's down at the 37-yard line. Here's a big, big series for Purdue on defense because Michigan will look to open up the lead. Don't forget, National Hockey League action on ESPN. The Toronto Maple Leafs taking on the Pittsburgh Penguins at the Igloo in Pittsburgh, and I'll be there to bring you that one Friday, November 20th, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, live on your number one source for sports, ESPN. National Hockey League action all season long. Right here, college football action. And Bo Schembechler wants somebody to come out. 13 years, the head coach at Michigan. He's looking for his 10th Big Ten championship. And you know, no matter how long you coach, you do stay with things that have always been good. You when it's sticky, look for Bo to go with the option to run the power off tackle with Wolfo. I still think he'll throw the football a little bit in key situations with Carter, but I got to believe you're going to see the Smith Wolfolk show for as long as they can control it. There you see Schembechler's record against Jim Young. You know, they're really close to Sam before the ball game. Uh, when we interviewed both of them, they were down visiting with each other, and it was a good feeling, good camaraderie. Of course, uh, Bo is very loyal to his people. He hired uh, Gary Moeller, who used to be at Illinois. He's back with him after Gary lost his job over there. And, uh, that's the kind of guy Schembechler is. Out to the left side, Vince Bean. There's Jim Young. Steve Smith. The sophomore calls the signals. Hands to Wolfolk. Has room. And gets up to the 45. Pushes his way to the 47-yard line. That's a first down for Butch Wolfolk. As he bites off a chunk. All they do there is double down with Bubba Paris. Norm Betts, and they lead with Edwards. Edwards, how about Stan Edwards, has done a great job all game just by blocking, occasionally runs the football, but the thing that impressed me most, and they ran the option to uh, let Smith score. Edwards had the key block after faking into the line. They got a measure on this one. Very close. And it's short. All right, so I was wrong. No first down, it's half a yard short. Use that NFL football. It's, uh, I guess that is the official Big Ten ball. Well, I guess uh, we passed a note that each team can designate the ball. Michigan was using it during practice uh, yesterday. Kind of interesting, the different footballs you get around the country, particularly it uh, depends on your place kicker. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Is it a harder ha uh, ball to handle than a college ball? You know, I think it's is. easier to throw, and that's what Purdue goes with. Okay. On second and short, Smith putting it up deep down the right side for Carter. It's overthrown. Derek Taylor, number three, was covering on the play. But on second and less than a yard, that's a good play to try. It is. But boy, Taylor is really solid. I mean, the guy has uh, done everything asked of him. Carter's stats look good, but uh, I've been impressed with Taylor. He's just going against a real horse. There's a story on Steve Smith, and he's been an excellent football player today. What a story. Early in the season, he his percentage was just awful. He'd hit about 38% of his passes. Last three games, he's completed 58%. And today, 10 for 16 again, having an outstanding game. Third and less than a yard for Michigan at the 47. Wolfolk will try and get it. He does. He dives forward to the 49. That's the first down. 9.40 to go in the game. Clock is running. And Michigan holding on to a 14-10 lead over Purdue. David Fry, number 60, made the stop on Butch Wolfolk. He's got about 80 yards today. Well, there was nothing doing there. He just made that himself. He's got, the, as all the good backs have, that leaping ability. You square those shoulders up. I saw Herschel Walker the other day. Give him that big dive, and uh, this is what Wolfo can do. They will measure this thing. It's close. Let's see what uh, Otto Kortz tells us. Sorry, that wasn't close, gang. <laughs> he made it by more than a yard. But Purdue wanted it anyway. That's right. 
Purdue asked for the measurement. They said, okay. It's your field, your ball, <laughs> your paint. <laughs> 9 31 to go. Michigan 14, Purdue 10. It's been quite a football game. Michigan has turned it over three times, so this thing has a long way to go. Lots of time left. But you know, Irv, it's that standard Michigan game. They wear you down. They sure. Keep wearing you down. Plus, it, uh, what it says across the front has a lot to do with football games. It's called tradition. Dunaway in motion. Hand off to Wolfolk. Goes inside. It's about a yard. Before the middle of the Purdue defense, led by number 99, Chris Scott. Along with Mark Brown, number 59. Scott has played quite a game. He's 6'5", 232, a sophomore. Well, they've really found something because it has been a real problem area with those injuries to Hannah and Monroe. And Scott, uh, with two more years left, uh, you know, they've really got something cooking here. Second and nine, ball on the Michigan 49-yard line. Carter goes out. Vince Bean is in. He's wide to the right side. Double tight end for Michigan. Smith looking over the middle and it is incomplete almost intercepted well number 59 Mark Brown had it and juggled it and missed it well you talk about close look at the agility on this athlete they did try and go across the middle and that's some kind of a play by Brown he gets a hand on it almost gets the ball caps it one more time tries to keep it alive his teammate Number 58, Sprock comes over, and just one of those things. That's a good circus act. Yeah, it is. They could take that on the road. <laughs> Mark Brown, good play. Third down and nine for Michigan. Think they'll go the option, Sam? Let's see. Smith has been successful with it. Wide receivers left and right. He'll put it up. He's looking over the middle for Bean. He's got him wide open. Vince Bean brought down at the 35-yard line by Marcus McKinney, who is shaken up on the play, but nice move by Vince Bean, and he was there. Well, Bean, who was the caddy last year for Carter, runs a slant, runs it hard. Those Michigan players will go across the middle. They don't worry about life or limb. He gets hit pretty good here, but he gives his ball club a first down. 8.07 remaining in this thing, and Michigan a fresh set of downs. 18-yard pickup on the play. Vince Bean came into this game with nine receptions, averaging 23 yards per reception. He's a good receiver, and he's only a sophomore. First and 10, Michigan at the 33. Smith still has the ball, cuts inside. Gets about two on the play before he's brought down Michigan, just eating up the clock. Casey Moore and David Fry making the tackle on Steve Smith as they spot the ball on the 31-yard line. Seven and a half minutes to go in the game. Going for a little sunlight, two shadows, so it does make it a little bit of a problem uh, when you're in that type of, type of sunlight and uh, the time of the day. Dunaway goes out. There you see the shadows coming, edging their way on to the field. Michigan driving. They're at the Purdue 31-yard line. Second down and eight yards to go. Hand off to Wolfo. And goes down about the 27-yard line. Picked up four on the play. That is a big, big line that Michigan puts up there. Moransky and Becker are just huge. I'll tell you, that clock is becoming a big, big factor, and Purdue having lost those two, two timeouts in the third quarter, uh, they're really going to be hurting. There will be controversy over it because uh, we get a good look for about three minutes at Jimmy Young, who was just adamant at what was going on, and they're going to need those timeouts if they're going to come from behind. They don't have them. Six and a half minutes to go, third and three Michigan at the Purdue 28-yard line. Smith looking over the middle. He's got a man open. Incomplete. Intended for the tight end, Craig Dunaway, who caught a touchdown pass in the first quarter, but this pass was thrown behind them. Jimmy Smith hasn't made, uh, or Steve Smith, that is, hasn't made very many mistakes, but he did this time. The ball was almost picked off. More important, they could have put that thing away because Dunaway was wide open. Okay, let's see what Michigan does here. Fourth down, and they're going to go for it. They have missed two field goal attempts in this game by Ali Haji Sheik, one of 49 and one of 40. If they try to field goal at this point, it would be 45 yard try. They're gonna go for it on fourth and three. Ball is at the 27, between the 27 and 28. 
Smith to throw, looking out to the right side to Stan Edwards, the fullback. He's down to the 10 and tiptoes his way down the sideline, out of bounds at the nine yard line. What a call. Anthony Carter took everybody across the middle. He attracted three. And Edwards, who hasn't been a factor in the passing game, slips out of the backfield. This is a brilliant call by Bo Schembechler. You talk about a guy who understands X and O's, and he works so well, hand in hand, with the guy named Hanlon, Jimmy Hanlon, up in the press box. They know each other. Boy, what a call. It could be the one that puts it away if they take it in. Michigan just grinding it out. 6-10 to go. Smith, 12 for 20, 195 yards. First and goal from the nine-yard line. Smith still has it. Cuts inside. Doesn't get anything. Good defense by Purdue. You know, once again, Sam, you got to marvel at that last call, though. That's been Bo's deal down through the years. Save something for that fourth period that people haven't seen. We haven't seen Edwards be a factor. Carter took everybody with him. I looked for him to throw to Carter on a slant, and there was Edwards slipping out of the backfield. Wolfo gets all the attention defensively, plus in the press. He has great numbers. There you see the scoreboard. And the cheerleader, Wolfolk, gets uh, the big numbers, but this guy Edwards can do it all. He can run, he can block, he can catch. He's a good one. Second and goal from the nine-yard line for Michigan. They lead 14 to 10. End around to Carter with three men in front of him. To the five. Carter to the goal line. He is just at the goal line. They're going to spot it short. He dove forward, but they're going to spot the ball inside or just about at the one-yard line. Same deal. We haven't seen that play. A little toss sweep from motion. Anthony Carter, student body right in front of him. And he takes it down close. There goes Carter. 161 pounds of fight and fury. 13th play of this drive for Michigan. There's the ball inside the one. Six inches. You know, on the key play on any fourth down, short yardage, or goal line situation like this, run the sneak, get a surge from your center. Don't let the linebackers have a chance to clean up. Don't They've, take a chance on an exchange. They've got the big offensive line. Third and goal. Inches away from the goal line for Michigan. Big drive. They're going to go. Diving is Wolfolk, and he's in. Touchdown, Michigan. With 4.32 to go, it looks like Michigan has just about put this game away with a tremendous drive, grinding it out. Wolfolk diving over the top for the touchdown. Now you've got to break the plane. This lets the linebackers uh, stack you up high. You be the judge. Here's Wolfolk going up. It's very, very close. He's over. He gets over the uh, plane. So uh, Michigan has themselves a 10-point lead with 4.32 left. Michigan ate up five minutes and 26 seconds with a tremendous drive. And they go in for the touchdown. Ali Hachishi. Well, in West Lafayette, Indiana, packed house over 69,000 here, watching the final home game of the season of the Purdue Boilermakers. And for a while, it looked like Purdue might be stunning Michigan, as Purdue led 10-7 at the end of the third quarter. But Michigan has come up with two fourth-quarter touchdowns, and they lead it 21-10. to And it is ironic, because that team man, Stan Edwards, is figured in both of them with a great block on Smith's touchdown. And then slipping out of the backfield. What a call by Bo Schembechler and his staff. Fourth down, and they went to Edwards, and that uh, set up the Wolfo touchdown. Haji Sheik with a long kick into the end zone. Jimmy Smith will run it out. Angles to the right side. Look out. Down he goes. As I mentioned earlier in the game, and as Irv has pointed out, Michigan has an excellent special team game, and they just cover those kicks brilliantly. Well, and you knew that Jimmy Smith was going to run it back because he has been a starter. He hasn't got to play, so it's going to happen like that. And in this case, instead of starting at the 20, Bostic makes the great hit, and they're going to start within the five-yard line. In serious trouble, 427 rem uh, remaining. One timeout is all they have left. Great tackle by Bostic. 427 to go in the game. Purdue at their own four. Campbell has thrown only 15 times in the game. Puts it up deep. For Bryan, intercepted by Bostic. Here he comes. He's at the 15. Breaks it outside down to the 14. So Keith Bostic, the junior from Ann Arbor, coming up with a big tackle on the kickoff and a great interception off the pass by Scott Campbell. Well, this guy, you talk about having two in a row. This is a good athlete. He missed the Michigan State game because of a stomach ailment. Makes the big interception here. Look at that leaping ability. You know, he's a great swimmer, Sam, but... 
I tell you what, I got to believe he can high jump a little too. He runs pretty well. Finally gets tackled, but Michigan has the football at the 14 yard line, and they're up 21 to 10 with 4.17 left. Looks like money in the bank. Could probably run track as well. <laughs> oh, he's a good athlete. We've had a good football game. The things have deteriorated a little bit for Purdue in the last three minutes. We've got to pick a player of the week for Vitalis. Our we'll Vitalis do that. Player of the game, pretty quick. We will name him for you very shortly. Michigan first and ten at the Purdue 14. This is Ricks breaking it outside and out of bounds at the six yard line. Lawrence Ricks who loves the goal line. He's the backup tailback to Wolfolk but he scored eight touchdowns this season. Watch 32 the fullback Edwards lead once again. This is what he does. He doesn't have to block much that time as a Purdue defender loses his footage. The number 46 almost gets space max mass that is and that's Ricks. So they're in good shape again. The ball is at the six yard line. Ball is at the six. It is second and two for Michigan. 4-12 to go. Steve Smith, 12 of 20, passing for 195 yards. Anthony Carter, seven receptions for 103. Edwards carrying to the five yard line. He's short of a first down. It'll be third and about one for Michigan. Before the ball game, Bo Schembechler made this statement to us. He says, if we win the next two ball games, he says, we will go to the Rose Bowl because he just believes that's the way the Big Ten race will go. So Bo with 351 remaining, um, uh, if he gets this one, he would face Ohio State. And he really believes that. Bo Schembechler is the kind of guy who tells you exactly what he <laughs> thinks. A lot of people think this is over. They're starting to leave here. Well, with Michigan holding on to the ball, 3.35 to go. They've got the 21 to 10 lead. They're looking to add to it here. Smith, pitch back. Ricks heads for the goal line. Touchdown, Michigan. Lawrence Ricks with his ninth touchdown of the season. He just knows where the goal line is. Got some good blocking, and Michigan has put this game away. Well, they really have. Ricks uh, to the outside. They'll fake once again to Edwards in here. Ricks just steps outside. They wall it off pretty well, but Purdue's tired now. They've been out there a long time this fourth quarter. And Michigan will wear you down. The defense that we've seen that's been so solid now is starting to come apart a little bit because of that Wolverine pressure. Here's the numbers. Coming into this game in the fourth quarter, Michigan had scored 77 points, opponent 16. Michigan has scored after this kick. It'll be 21 points in the fourth game. And Ali Hajijik with it through the end zone. Jimmy Smith just watched it go through. Perhaps a little fortunate that he didn't have to run it out again. The great coverage by Michigan. What a game they've played. Michigan Wolverines, despite three turnovers in the game, which uh, could have cost them dearly. Uh, Purdue only able to capitalize with a uh, field goal by Clark and uh, one touchdown by Jeff Fulner. Michigan has broken it open with 21 points here in the fourth quarter. 28 to 10, Michigan leading it. Campbell, draw play to Fulner. Nothing there. Fulner's had a good game as Jim Young certainly has found himself a uh, fine running back. We're experiencing some technical problems. Bear with us, please. We hope to clear them up immediately. There you see the scoring drive. Three plays and 14 yards. <laughs> well, they're enjoying themselves. That's a that's a new formation. Yeah. Bo Schembechler might try that sometime. After the Rose Bowl, maybe. The completion is to Steve Bryant, leading receiver on the Purdue team, up to the 28-yard line. Brian Carpenter made the stop. Want to thank a few people who have helped us out immensely today. Our statistician Tim Newton has done a tremendous job. Our spotters, Larry Landman of Michigan, and Neil McCartney of Purdue. Thank you, gentlemen. Our director, as usual, picking some great shots, Kent Samuel. Purdue on the 29-yard line. 2.20 to go in the game. Flags go down. Looks like the lay of the game coming against the Boilermakers. Well, they tried to surprise Michigan with the running game. Did a good job of it. But uh, I don't know if they throw they threw as much as perhaps they should have because maybe uh, after loosening up with the with ground game Irv, they should have gone to the air which has been uh, their big success this year. Of course, you know, was, they did get ahead. They were uh, holding on to a 10-7 lead and then you tend to go just a little bit cautious. Then all of a sudden, Michigan just exploded. They're a very opportunistic team. You saw what Bostic did. He really put it away himself right there. And it's, just, it's a good football team, very solid. 
Purdue has nothing to be ashamed of. These kids have played very hard. Bryant in motion. Campbell throwing. It's complete to Rutherford. David Rutherford, a sophomore wide receiver, takes it up to the 42-yard line. It's a first down for Purdue. Clock stopped with two minutes to go in the game. But I tell you, no small lead is safe against Michigan. You've got to get way out in front and make them change their game plan because Michigan able to, to stay in the plan, run the football, and just wear you down with that strong offensive line. Campbell on first down, deep for Bryant, overthrown. Covered by Tony Jackson, number 37 on the play. It'll be second and 10 for Purdue with 1.48 to go in the game. Been a great day here in West Lafayette. Great crowd. Purdue rushing 99 yards in the first half, 39 yards in the second half. And most of that did come in that long drive where they were able to pick up uh, the touchdown. Fuller scored. One of the things that they did accomplish today, Fuller rushed for over 100 yards against Michigan. That isn't easy. There have been some great backs in the Big Ten that haven't been able to accomplish that. And this kid in his first start gets it done. King in motion. Campbell a throw. Short to King. Incomplete. Here's our Vitalis player of the game, number 16, the sophomore quarterback from Grand Blanc, Michigan, Steve Smith. And what a game he's played today. Well, early in the year, there, you know, a lot of people didn't think he should be the quarterback, and all he has done is really helped this football team. The last four games, Michigan has played tremendously on offense, and we'll just have to see if Bo's uh, uh, prediction that if they win the next two ball games, they'll be in the Rose Bowl. They have this one pretty well wrapped up and take a minor miracle with 144 left from Ohio State waiting next week. Smith. 12 passes completed out of 20, 195 yards, one touchdown. Campbell to throw over the middle for Bryant. He juggles it, it's incomplete. And bring up fourth down, Keith Bostic. That man again, number 13, covering on the play. Campbell hit down hard on the pass. We need two awards today because this Bostic, we had a pretty good decision to make uh, over him. This guy can play. Let's not forget Stan Edwards either yeah. has played a fine game. Steve Smith adding to the numbers, rushing 15 carries, 65 yards, a 27-yard touchdown run. He's thrown for a touchdown. What a season he's having. He has had himself 14 touchdown passes and run for 11 touchdowns. Some good numbers for a sophomore. And this Scott Campbell's a sophomore. So the Big Ten got some fine quarterbacks there. Yes, they do. Campbell throwing long on fourth down for Brian. It's incomplete. Brian Carpenter covering on the last gasp for Purdue. The Boilermakers offense will go off the field. 132 to go in the game. And Bo Schembechler can empty the bench a little bit. Give some uh, youngsters some playing time in the final minute and a half of the game. Steve Bryant, the senior, has played his last home game. He was a junior college transfer from California. Coming over to Purdue has had two fine seasons, and you can look for him in the NFL draft. A couple of looking at the roster, I noticed Mike Mallory's on Michigan's uh, roster. His papa, the football coach in Northern Illinois, Bill Mallory, good friend of Bo Schembechler's. B.J. Dickey pitching back to Rick Rogers. Rogers taking it down inside the 35-yard line. B.J. Dickey, number 18, the senior quarterback. Rick Rogers, number 38, a freshman running back. Uh, top scorer in the Detroit <laughs> top scorer in the Detroit area last year as a high school All-American. Number 86 is Greg Washington, the wide receiver. Fred Brockington wide to the left side. A minute to go in the game. Michigan leading it 28 to 10. Inside, Rick Rogers carrying again down to the 25-yard line. Chris Scott, who's played a fine game made the tackle there's our cameraman <laughs> he's locked in yeah the problem is this one. <laughs> he is stuck in too. you know this Brian did not play high school football isn't that amazing is that right yeah, that's a pretty good athlete he's a basketball player and the coach liked his jumping ability Rick Rogers again Nice run by the freshman. Well, he got a referee. The crowd is happy. <laughs> 25 seconds to go. Make it 27 seconds to go in the game. Michigan will go 8-2 and two on the season and 6-2 and two in the Big Ten. And next week, 
the Wolverines will host Ohio State and the big one in Ann Arbor. I still can't believe 105,000 people watch a game at Ann Arbor every week they play there. So consistent, they do. Rodgers again, flag goes down. Final seconds of the game. Rodgers brought down around the 19-yard line. Looks like we got a holding penalty. Number 85 for Michigan, Jimmy Sarcello. Got a little anxious. This is not a time to hold, fellas. <laughs> Seven seconds left on the clock. For Purdue, it'll be their third loss in a row. And after a good start to their season, they're now 5-5. Five and five. They will wind up with their intrastate rivalry game next week in Bloomington, Indiana, against the Indiana Hoosiers, and Irv Brown will be there for that one. That's always a good game. You can throw all the records out because they will hit each other, so people uh, really like that contact. There it is. It's okay. all Okay, clock has run out. Bo Schembechler, a very happy man, as the Michigan Wolverines, with three touchdowns in the fourth quarter, wearing down Purdue, have defeated Purdue. There you see Bo shaking hands with his former assistant coach Jim Young. Michigan has won it here in West Lafayette, Indiana. The final score, Michigan 28, Purdue 10. We'll be back to wrap it up in just a moment.